When we think of the largest shark tooth of all time, Megalodon is the obvious answer to pop up in our heads. After all, the Megalodon did have the largest shark teeth of all time, if we're looking at true sharks at least. However, going back approximately 270 million years ago in the Paleozoic era, there was an animal, not a true shark, but a relative within the class Chondrichthys that had teeth that could rival the size of Megalodons. I met up with Cody Burkett and the renowned paleontologist J.P. Hodnett at the Museum of Northern Arizona, located in Flagstaff. And J.P. was kind enough to give us a little bit of a lecture on Megatina pedalis kybabinus, the animal with teeth rivaling megalodons. My name is Ben Good, and welcome to Elasmocast. Presented by the Museum of Northern Arizona, um, the Kaiba began was like 260 million years ago. It was a great seaway that stretched all the way from essentially what is now Mexico all the way up into the uh, Canadian Arctic, um, and it connected waters like we see uh, today, like the Phosphory Formation, where we find Helicoprion. Um, but the the big daddy of the Kaibab is a shark called uh, Megatina pelis. So when this exhibit was created, this was supposed to be the representation of Megatina pelis, the big shark tooth, which is to my left over here, which is a tooth that's roughly the size of an average uh, megalodon tooth, but it's half a tooth, so it actually would have been actually bigger in life. Um, that tooth was found on the north rim of the Grand Canyon back in the late, late uh, 1930s. Um, and it was officially described in the early 1940s. And uh, it was one of the first major vertebrate fossils to be described from the Grand Canyon that wasn't like a Pleistocene animal. Um, so this was with the reconstruction, so they kind of re reconstructed like a classic shark. Unfortunately, this is now totally inaccurate. However, to uh, their own benefit, this is very similar to what we would think uh, Kai Bavinator would have a similar look to this. Though I would actually make some changes. First things first, since Kai Bavinator is a Timacanth shark, there would have been Timacanth spines off the dorsal fin. It's missing one of the dorsal fins that it wouldn't need, so there would be another dorsal fin there with a spine. Um, but it would have been quite large, um, with Kai Bavinator being roughly the size of a great white or bigger. Um, but they do have a shark here called uh, Janassa, which is an early pelodont that had a, a skate-like body form. Um, we know this from body fossils from Germany and England. Um, but they have found isolated teeth of this animal uh, right here in Flagstaff, Arizona. Awesome. And going back to Megatina pedalis, mm -hmm. so how large is the largest known specimen? So the largest uh, known specimen that I'm aware of was found in West Texas. Um, we're talking about a tooth that's long about this size. So, you know, we think about large, uh, you know, megalodon teeth, you know, being about this big, you know, seven inches or more. That's what um, she said. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but we're talking about in terms of diameter. So what you do not see with this specimen, this is, again, this is the type specimen, so this is the specimen that designated the, the genus and species, uh, Megatinus carbanus, um, that is actually horseshoe shaped. So it actually oh. it recurs around much greater than what, actually what you see here. We didn't know that until another specimen was found in, near, uh, uh, off the 89A going towards Sedona. There was a large rock that actually has a partial uh, Megatina pelis. Uh, most of the enamel has been eroded away, but you see some of the cusp, but you actually preserve that horseshoe shape, and there's actually accessory uh, U-shaped cusplets on the back, oh. um, which actually will support the lower tooth, which actually, it is not cuspate, which you're seeing here in the, uh, which is the considered the upper tooth. The lower tooth is actually very triangular, very blade-like, and has smooth edges. So, and a tooth like that was found originally in southern Arizona, and uh, from the Concha limestone near, um, like the near the Benson area, or maybe it was more towards Sonoda. Sonoda. But anyway, um, but uh, we have found more complete teeth of the lower tooth now. Um, we have one example that was collected from NAU campus, which is a juvenile, and then there's some fragments that were found in China and Iran and, and places like that. Mm -hmm. And what's some of the history behind this specific? display one. 
So the, the history behind this particular display, so uh, this tooth was originally, so this is now a cast, which is fantastic, because the original holotype was on display here, which generally when you have holotype specimens, you really don't want them to be on display, because you want to have them sort of available for scientists to uh, research in the future. Um, but when they first built this hall, um, they took the original tooth and glued it to the base that it was on. Um, which is very making very difficult to actually study, um, but it's been a while since I've been back here, and it's great to see. Actually, they now have a, a, a very lifelike cast on display as um, on display rather than the official official specimen. So, um, but yeah, so this is one of two specimens that the uh, Museum of Northern Arizona has in their collections, and um, there's only a handful of specimens all across the world, but um, yeah, Arizona has the most most of them that I know of so far. Mm-hmm. And what's kind of the controversy that you guys had when trying to find where this thing came from? Oh yeah, so uh, when this was originally described, it was mentioned him coming from Point Sublime in the north rim of the Grand Canyon. And uh, so part of a paleontological resource inventory we conducted back in uh, 2019 for the National Park Service was the idea to try to relocate the original type locality. So we drove out to Point Sublime and when we got there, uh, the rocks were wrong. There's no way there could be any vertebrate or any invertebrate fossils were found in that region. Um, it was very much uh, kind of marbleized kind of uh, limestones. They just did not have fossils whatsoever. So we wound up coming back through that uh, area the next following day. And it turns out that we actually wound up finding a perfect fossil outcrop loaded with vertebrate fossils on the road towards uh, Point Sublime. And that had to have been the area where this and one other large shark tooth was collected uh, about the same time. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And what was this related to? So this is, is a pristodontine um, possible, well, we would consider it usually as a pelodont, though there is some controversy about that assignment. Um, some of my uh, peers consider that pristodont um, sharks are actually a cousin group to true pelodonts. Um, but the classic. Uh, uh, classification was that they were a type of uh, pelodon that had multiple cuspid teeth, so the upper teeth would be very kind of like cookie cutter like, um, with a lower tooth that would actually fit underneath behind it. So it was like a singular tooth shark. Um, this would have been related to things called peripristis, um, pristotis, um, and uh, uh, some other like uh, tenotychias. Um, this one was it tenotychias? No, maybe it's tenopellus. Anyway. Uh, so, yeah, so these are various different groups, so uh, they're more closely related to ratfish compared to, like, modern sharks. Mm -hmm. And if this thing had megalodon-sized teeth, how big was the animal itself? Not as big as you think. So, it's a, people see teeth like this and like, oh my god, yeah, is this like, you know, 40 to 50 foot shark? And no, it is not. It is uh, probably maybe not much longer than 8 feet. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, so this thing had massive, teeth. Yeah, massive teeth in its jaws, but, you know, not huge bodies. Awesome. It's very interesting. Not many people know of teeth that could rival a megalodon size. Yeah, this, like this. this predates megalodon, you know by oodles. oodles of time, yeah. So, I mean, this fossil, this shark lived uh, approximately 260 to 270 million years ago during the early to mid Permian. So, well, well before uh, even dinosaurs, really. So, uh, just kind of show that, you know, there's a lot more things to be discovered in the Paleozoic rocks where Chondrichthians versus like, you know, Cenozoic and Mesozoic. Awesome. Well, if you're interested in this tooth, come check it out at the Museum of Northern Arizona in Flagstaff. Yep. Take care. Thanks, JP. You're Thank you. <laughs> JP on it, everybody. Take care. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to support this channel that is based on everything and anything related to sharks and their relatives. It means a lot, and your support's greatly appreciated. We'll catch you guys next time.